Well, another stock that we are keeping an eye on this morning is Tesla. Right now, taking a look at shares over the last six months, the stock has been on quite a run now, after climbing more than 110 percent. You can see the stock today is under a little bit of pressure, but still trading at $568 a share. Well, earnings, they're due out next week, and many are expecting things will only get better for Elon Musk and company. We have Dan Ives of Webbush here. And Dan, I know you have a very, very bullish call out on Tesla, you think it could hit $900 a share. Wow. Okay, I think that's really the bull case. I mean, you, you sort the of- very have, bull case. Yeah, because you gotta take a sort of line in the sand. Base case right here, what's called five, 550. But really the bull case, it's all predicated on China. Mm -hmm. Because fundamentally, if you look what's happened in terms of Giga 3 and Chinese demand, you know, just put numbers around the what's called today 360, 370,000 in terms of units. China could be an incremental 150 to 200K. That's why the bull thesis, China's worth another $300 per share. That's how you get to that sort of uber bull thesis on Tesla. Well, is there any problem for Tesla with so much of the story right now being about China, considering everything that's happening, not just U.S., China, and trade. I know we have the phase one deal right now, but also China's supposedly slowing economic growth. I mean, right now, uh, Elon Musk has a lot of his eggs in the China mm -hmm. market basket. No doubt. And that's also why with Giga 3, remember, that's the big advantage here. The only U.S. car manufacturer with a footprint in China. It comes down to EV demand. I mean, today, 4.9% 4, 4 in terms of China's EV is a percent of overall automotive. We think that goes to 10% in the next three years. So no doubt China continues to be sort of, I think, an emotional bull bear story yeah. in terms of around Tesla. But nonetheless, in terms of next week, I mean, obviously, I think it's bullish, but specifically around China. That's really what I really want to emphasize is what I view as the difference between a $550 stock or $700 or bear case, how you get to a $300. It's remarkable how many companies supposedly were going to have troubles in China in the last year because of trade and just didn't. I mean, they're oh. big American companies, Starbucks, you know, uh, Anheuser-Busch, a Belgian company, but Budweiser is a big brand there. Uh, you know, Under Armour is doing very well in China. Trade hasn't seemed to really ding these American brands in China like people expected. And we talked about here, even if you go back a year ago, you could Apple, right? I mean, that's sort of been our, yep. that's been the core part of both thesis and Apple is that the view is is that the the trade was going to be a negative headwind in China but ultimately what Chinese consumers are doing they're not protesting Apple they're actually just buying iPhones and that's why if you look at you see it in terms of numbers but I do agree that's why I think from an investor perspective there's a lot of noise God, peel away the onion to see where the fundamentals are. Well, let's talk a little bit more about Apple, because I know you just came out with you're more bullish than you were before. You have a $400 price target on the stock right now, so you still think this uh, stock has room to run. When we take into account the fact that Apple already had such a great 2019, do you think that that is at all, I guess you don't probably, a risk to the company this year? After issuing a warning in January yeah. 2019, I mean, how much changed in a year a for Apple? Changed. Yeah, and that, but, but I think our thesis on Apple, it's really been a multi-year it sort of both these, even going back to a year ago, it comes down to the install base. And that's the one thing I want to emphasize, that 350 million of 925 million iPhones are in the window of an upgrade opportunity. Going into a 5G super cycle, that's a perfect storm in demand. Do you think they need to lower the prices of the iPhones, though, or no? Ultimately, I mean, if you look at numbers today, both in the U.S. as well as internationally, I mean, demand's been strong. I think that's what you'll see next week from Cupertino, probably about a billion-dollar beat. AirPods obviously continue to be strong as well. But it's a re-rating because it, it all comes down, the linchpin of it is the services business. You go back two, three years ago, that services business not really getting a rating. It, you, you're valuing the overall iPhone franchise. Today, we think services is worth $600 billion in terms of that piece. That's a key part of the re-rating here on Apple. It's interesting, though, that you mentioned services because, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like when Apple did come out and say, hey, we, you know, we're not going to sell as many iPhones in China, warning, in January, it was like January 2, 2019, uh, they said, look over here at services, and you started to see everyone talk more about services and say, that's why it's okay. The install base, the services are going to be huge. And now, even though that business is still huge, clearly, people are excited again about iPhones. It's like, actually, iPhone is, is pretty good business. We don't it's need a, to try to hype up the services. It's a renaissance of growth in terms of what's happening with the iPhone. Think about the last few years, okay, flat growth, even declining. Now, I think ultimately 2021, that could even be a peak year, even surpassing iPhone 6 in 2015. Wow. You put numbers around it, that's why, look, the haters are going to hate on Apple. <laughs> yeah, I know. And no doubt. Well, their ecosystem and, is so strong. And, and it's hard it, to hate. But it all comes down to the install base is the golden jewel. And as long as they monetize that, given what we're seeing in terms of the super cycle, the stock has a four in front of it in a year.
Wow. That's I a, yeah, that. I mean, what would you say, just real quick, because we're running out of time, but what would you say is the number one risk to that bull thesis on Apple at this point? Is it China? It's China. Yeah. Because China, ultimately, for Apple, you have 60 to 70 million iPhones in a window of an upgrade opportunity. If there's disappointment there, then the stock obviously gets hit. But that's why our view is that Right now, if you look at the opportunity set and you look at where we are in 5G and look at the install base, I think right now it's sort of a Goldilocks scenario in terms of the setup, despite volatility you could see in the stock. Wow. Same with Tesla. I know. Both of them have China risk. Hard All to right. bet against it. Dan Ives, thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Great chat, as always.